Good evening, folks. This is the Factivist Report for Sunday, the 14th of May, and it's Mother's Day. And this is perfect because we're talking about two motherfuckers tonight, right? <laughs> Keith Bannon and George Santos. Take the two last names, B and S, bullshit. That's what they're all about. Right. We've forgotten them. We're here to remind you about what they're all about. Here's here's why I want to talk about this. Uh, one of one of the things I want to make perfectly clear is that political corruption has been around since the the start of the system. Okay, always has been around. Corruption has been around since fucking Greece. Okay, so, since Greece, okay. since the cavemen. You know, since cavemen were stealing sticks from each other. It's it's always. <laughs> It's human nature. And dragging I, each other's wives by their hair across the continent, okay? So <laughs> let's get real, folks, all right? Yeah, so it, it's always been around. However, Donald Trump helped normalize it. He did. To a degree that we have not seen in a very long time, if ever, we've in never, the history of the United been, States. You know, where we are right now in our history, we have never been here before. This, this I is, mean, the closest, what, sure. McCarthyism, McCarthyism, yeah. Nixon, Nixon would gasp at this. Right. He, he would you know, be clutching in his we pearls. Had McCarthyism and all that. You know what? Th this is so widespread now. Honestly, it, it is. Right. It is in our legislature. It, it They are here, okay? And they are serious. They're not we, stopping. None of us have, were around for Andrew Jackson. That's probably the closest that you, know, that you could say. But we weren't around for that. Right. So in our lifetime, this is the worst it's ever been. Right. I, I, no question. Uh, and you're seeing just this normalization of the corruption of the GOP and the GOP exists to allow GOP members to do whatever the hell they want with, with uh, the other gender, whatever, you know, sexually, economically, recreationally, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. That's, that's what this is. A bunch of mostly, adolescent boys in older men's bodies and and honestly Oof. mostly white women who know their place in society right all right it, the, these are women who like casey desantis who stepped aside and allowed her husband to walk off the stage with her hand on his back instead of it being the other way around okay these are women who know where they belong in society and they do not belong. They belong parroting the narrative of their husbands and of the GOP males in this party. That is where the, you know, you had Lauren Bobia stated herself, women are the lesser vessel. I'll never forget this. Women are the lesser vessel. They need men to make them strong. These are what the, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene, we are our husband's wives. Of course, She's not anybody's wife right now, but that that's immaterial. It's, these these right. are women who espouse these these values. Okay, so make no mistake about this. Yes, there are a lot of women now in politics, but a lot of these women are the wrong women to have in politics. Now, why did I pick the two men that I picked? For a few reasons. Number one. They have all been charged with crimes. Okay. Bannon has already been convicted. I, we don't know. Is his his uh sentencing has been delayed? Uh we don't know what he's going to get yet. Santos will be convicted and of something. He has 13 charges right now. Federal charges. They have a they have a huge paper trail. They have a huge they, case they against do those, them. They don't they don't they don't indict people for that without having a paper trail. Uh, you know that that's that's the reality. They both have 
they both have official either Department of Justice or the Attorney's Office of New York, they both have official announcements about their cases, whether it be their indictments or whatever it is. Understand that. Also, they have ties to Trump. Right. All right. Um, And there are, uh, let's say, patterns to their behavior. It's a pattern of GOP behavior. They commit of fraud or whatever they're doing. They're laughing about it, getting away with it. They get caught, then claim witch hunt. Right. <laughs> so let's uh, let's get into this. First, the first thing I want to say is that we may be quote unquote cherry picking a couple of these people but trust me there's there it's pervasive among the uh among the trump cabinet member whoever uh, uh, among the trump uh staff and people related to him or people who he's endorsed it's it's pervasive at this point yeah, uh, I have. a perfect example of that is Fannie Willis in, in Georgia already warning law enforcement uh, that right. she's going to be coming coming down with her uh, indictments sometime between June and September. And she expects people in Georgia to act outside the norm uh, of acceptable right. behavior when they hear it. I mean, you know, this isn't a joke, folks. This isn't, you know, you know, a, a senator frolicking in a fountain with a with a hooker. This is these people right. are fascists, okay? Right. This isn't a drunken night, or this isn't um, Andrew Gillum with a male prostitute in a, in a hotel room. This isn't that. This is pervasive economic broader, you know, cover ups of. All sorts of stuff. So this is a list of eight Trump associates arrested and or and or convicted of crimes. Bannon is one of them. Okay, so we have Roger Stone. By the way, he was pardoned. Paul Manafort guilty of tax fraud, bank fraud, August of twenty eighteen. Witness tampering, money laundering. Witness tampering. There you go. Lobbying violations. Conspiracy. Michael Cohen, who already has served his time and now is turning state's evidence against Trump. Michael Flynn. All right. So served as Trump's national security advisor for less than a month in 2017. Yep. I mean, how is this guy still in the middle, you know, allowed to wear his military medals? I, I just, you know, and it didn't stop there. You know, these are people who literally, at least, you know, where, where Flynn is concerned, where Roger Stone is concerned, who tried to overthrow a legitimate election to keep Trump in power. OK, it is Rick Gates. financial guilt. It's it's yeah. a lot of guilt. Rick Gates, part of a part of a cover up. OK. So, testified as a prosecution witness against Man- Manafort, his former business partner, and Roger Stone. Gates was sentenced to 45 days in jail in December of 2019. George Nader, a Trump advisor on foreign policy, sentenced in June to 10 years in prison by a federal judge in Virginia for possessing child pornography and bringing a boy to the United States for sex. The fifth party of family values. I rest my case. George Papadopoulos, uh, sentenced in September 2018 to 14 days in prison after pleading guilty in October 2017 to lying to the FBI about his contacts with Russian officials and a Maltese professor who told him the Russians had dirt on Clinton. Which they did not say. Okay. Right. So... 
here's what here's what spurred me on and we're going to move from present kind of like move in the past with uh mr bannon so steve bannon was just swatted like a couple of days ago while he was doing his show the war room um but this is this is uh Something that happened last year. Armed officers swarmed Stephen K. Bannon's house after a false report. Okay. Falsely told the man with a gun was inside and shot someone. Now, to the best of my knowledge, not in this case or the one that just recently happened, has the caller been identified? So we don't know if this was a targeting situation or if this was an inside caller. We have no idea. Okay. I'm just calling it as I see it. So. We have. This is the story on Stephen Bannon. Steve Bannon being swatted again. Uh, this was from the business in, from Business Insider. The right wing commentator was live broadcasting. How convenient, by the way. Live broadcasting his War Room podcast when the police raided his home. Well, this was by uh, Bethany Dawson from the Bus uh, Business Insider. So they raided his, his uh, bod podcast studio in his, uh, his D.C. home while he was live, responded to calls of shooting at the location. Bannon said it's not the first time a swatting call has resulted in police showing up, which is true. Um, police raided the right-wing ideologue uh, Steve Bannon's home and podcast studio in Washington, D.C. while he was live, responding to calls of shooting at the location. Um the audience heard a scuffle in the background before the host switched to an ad break. Later in the show broadcast from Bannon's studio, he explained that the noise we got swatted in the middle of the show. You know, hey, can you knock it off? I got to concentrate here. We're actually getting swatted. Um, so swatting is someone calling with a false police report to target someone. All right. Um, and then what I found was that was odd is that they mentioned the address, to be honest with you. But streamers such as uh, Bannon are prime targets for swatting. If the swatters get it right, they have the maximum impact and dubious pleasure of watching their victim deal with the unexpected police visit live. If you ever get a chance to watch the brink, Watch the brink because right. yep. it gave me the idea that maybe he is doing this himself. I'm not saying I have any evidence of that. I don't. Okay. But by the way, we're not supporters of swatting. We are not. We've never have been. Not not of swatting and not of doxing either, right. which I I found that was weird that they put his address in there. Right. Right. The criminals, and it is criminals that continue to swat us, have they have to understand that the police are savvy to you and investigating it. <laughs> Swatting is a federal crime. It became a federal crime in 2015, pub punishable by up to a lifetime in prison. Uh, swatting is rare, but in ca some cases has resulted in uh, deaths. And that's, and, uh, okay. no. that's violence. It's violence. So what I want to uh, what I want to show you guys, and I do have the uh, a story about the Brooks Brooking Institute's uh, findings. So Bannon's war room alone, according to the Brookings Institute study, account for sixty eight percent of conspiracy claims on political podcasts. Okay, so it's it's really a uh, 
a purveyor of conspiracy theories. And what better way... Right. And what better way to provide a conspiracy theory of their being swatting by, by creating it yourself? Now, if anyone is on the left doing this, stop it. Exactly. Please. You're feeding him. And if he's way, do not yeah. doing anything for the people on the left either. All right. No, you're not. We don't need this shit. We need to we need to not be like these people is what we need. When we sink to their level, they win. They're going to use that. Do I put it beneath him to target himself, pull like a mean girls and target himself? I don't. I'm as I'm saying, I don't know who did it. Could be someone to the left, could be someone to the right trying to help him. Okay, who knows? Could be him, I don't know. So this is the um this is the report about how um right wing propagandists sort of propagate their propaganda they do it by offhand comments okay they do it by having conversations oh we're just having a conversation oh deb let's just have a debate let's just have a conversation yeah we've had those before so. yeah no thanks <clears throat> So, come on. It's, come on. it's, yeah, it's, hold on. Let me see what I can do here. There we go. So, yeah, it's, it's frozen for a minute. Um, what I'll say is that I have a couple of stories here that talk about the movie The Brink that interviewed the the person who um, who interviewed him and she first off she the reason she did it was partly because of his um casual conversations about uh Auschwitz and how amazed he was by the architecture and the precision and how well they did the yeah it's just ter yeah, it's like terrifying um so okay like Madison Cawthon visiting Eagle's Nest. Right. Oh, we just was, it was just a vacation. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's go to Hitler's <laughs> land for vacation. What a great fucking idea. So here's, you know, here's just the introductory um, paragraph from, from the uh, Brookings Institute article. In February of 2021, Texas Senator Ted Cruz and co-host Daily Wire co-host and commentator Michael Knowles recorded a live episode of The Verdict with the Ted Cruz podcast. In a casual conversation about his former Senate race opponent, Beto O'Rourke, the Texas Republican described his rival's support base as primarily reporters who act like groupies at a Rolling Stones concert throwing their underwear. Offhandedly, he added, if they wore underwear, yes. With a smirk, he leaned into the microphone and asked Knowles, too edgy? Knowles replied, it's a podcast, you can say whatever you want. Now, yeah, you can say whatever you want. You have no, you know, <laughs> you have no evidence to any of that. You know, it's just a bunch of, they're just making a bunch of jokes and whatever. Just but a couple point of good being, old boys. A couple, couple of good old boys. boys. Having fun. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Which is what um which is what 
Bannon was extremely good at. He was very good at political spin. There's a couple of, as I said, articles, uh, one from the Rolling Stone uh, interviewing Al Allison Klayman, who wrote, who uh, filmed the documentary, rather. Um, her documentary doesn't want to bury or praise the controversial alt-right pop uh, populist. It just wants you to know your enemy. Now, one of the things that she said here was that one of the dangerous parts of this was that she found him in a weird way self-deprecating, humorous, um, and in a weird way charming, but in an unsettling way because she knew what he was doing. So let me see. Might be able to. Um, so there's no Steve question Bannon, he's a dangerous guy. I mean, he really is. He's an extremely dangerous guy. Steve Bannon has been charged with several things, you know, fraud in regards to the wall and uh, different things. Uh, so <laughs> he he had a rift with a public rift, let's put it that way, with Donald Trump. But to be completely honest with you, um, it is questionable as to whether they were ever really enemies, right. if you know what I mean. Right. They have always been, even if they were cautious allies, they've always been allies. Yeah. I, I, so I this is an article. That was for show, you know, honestly. Right. Exactly. And again, this guy's a showman. You see it in the brink when he showed this, this, this like propaganda piece. And they're like, Steve, this is pure propaganda. He's like, so? Right. He was proud of it. <laughs> so, uh, there's another, another article about the Steve, uh, Steve Bannon documentary, more, you know, more interviews with Allison, uh, in this one, she's saying that it was her job to interview this guy. She doesn't really care if she ever talks to him again, to be completely honest with you. He knows that she was um, she was from the left. Um, he knows that she was using him, but he was using her. Okay. If you're a Bannon fan going in, you'll probably remain one coming out. The man is witty, self-aware, extremely sly. You never can tell when he believes in the snake oil he's selling. So he was the one that came up with the um, with the uh, banning of um, immigrants. Right. Or the the right. um, yeah. So. And by the way, it says right there, Victor Orban makes a, an appearance in the film. He did. As does, quite frankly, um, the woman who was just the fascist who was just elected to uh, to Italy, uh, in Italy. Uh, oh, I can never pronounce the name. Erdogan? No, that's um, uh, the woman. It begins with a name. Hold on. I've, no, I but... That one was in there. Orban was in there. There were several was fascists. Not, uh, she was not at that time right. running for prime minister of Italy, right. president of Italy, whatever. She was, however, accompanying in a big political right winger from Italy, a guy. I just can't remember his name. I'm going to just try to find out, uh, give you her name first. Right. Those were the ones that were arguing with the reporter at right, the uh, right. at the table. Yeah, right. Georgia Maloney. Maloney, right? Yeah, that's that's the woman. Now, 
she she was a she bought into Bannon's global vision of um, right wing extremism of fascism. That's really what that was really what the brink was all about, making this a worldwide global effort to push all of these countries to the right, not just the United States. And by the way, he's talking about nationalism. He's talking about nationalism helping corporations. He he doesn't care about the individual. That's right. <laughs> he doesn't. Well, that's what uh, fascism is. So. so he has been he has been indicted for contempt of Congress. Okay. He was sentenced to four months in prison on two counts of uh, contempt in regards to the uh to failing to comply with the su a subpoena issued by the House Select Committee in investigating January 6th. Now, I just wanted, after all of our uh, wrenching of hands and, and ranting on the short shows, and after all of this drama, I figured have a little bit of levity if if we can get it on here the new york <laughs> the new yorker uh did a search and some of the titles of these uh of these articles are pretty uh are pretty good they're they're making me wait but they're worth the wait so <laughs> so i did a search on steve bannon <laughs> Hmm. You alive? And it's, yeah. My uh come on. It's worth it. What the hell is this? Stop it's, it. It's a slow All day. Right. Here we go. So yeah. many Trump scandals, so little time. <laughs> Steve Bannon gets his wall. I like that one. No, that was... Hold on. This is a pretty good one. There we go. Steve Bannon claims he spent January 6th washing his hair. I love that picture, too. Oh, these are Andy Borowitz. He's funny. Bannon, Bannon arrested for contempt of soap. <laughs> <laughs> Garland, Garland versus Bannon is Bidenism versus Trumpism. Yep. Yeah. Bannon caught fleeing U.S. disguised as a man who re recently took a shower. <laughs> El Chapo refuses to share a prison cell with Steve Bannon. You get, you get the point. Um, but some of these are serious, though. They are very serious, all right? The The bottom line is this man is a grifter. He's been a grifter, but he is he is an amazing messenger, okay? Again, if you get a chance, watch The Brink. It's, it's incredible. The man is incredibly self-aware. He knows about his weight. He knows about the way he looks. He's self-deprecating, but at the same time, that man can message like no, I, 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 it's amazing. He, he, he's well, he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing, That's and he's unapologetic his, about it. His stick. Trust me. By the way, including but not limited to pushing men who are you know supporting and endorsing men who assaulted teenage girls. That was Roy Moore, correct? Yes. So I'm like, and then Alabama, it, I believe. Yeah, it was. So now is our next uh, grifter, grifter and scumbag and motherfucker, motherfucker number two. This is the official statement from the um, 
U.S. Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of New York, George, uh, Congressman George Santos charged with fraud, money laundering, theft of public funds, false statements. Not going to go through all of this. The theft but, of public funds part comes from his claim that he was unemployed during COVID. He collected COVID money. Right. Unemployment. <laughs> Unemployment. Santos allegedly embezzled contributions from supporters, fraudulently obtained unemployment benefits, and, and lied in disclosures to the House of Representatives. Okay. Wouldn't even tell people his real name. Uh, there was a there was an article out there just recently about a uh, he partnered up with uh, a, another candidate, GOP candidate in another state to raise money um, from the state of New York. And they claim that they never received any money. Right. And that was that's not uncommon for him. He's done that before. Now. I ask if you guys watch us and want this information. There is a video right here. It'll be in the sources. It's pretty amazing. I I listened to the I listened to it. All right. There was a documentary documentarian. His name is Blake Zeff. He wanted to do a documentary on George Santos. And Blake Zeff said himself, we cannot do this. We cannot pay political representatives to appear in a documentary. That's not what we do. I don't know if it's legal or if it is not legal. But what I can say is, is it, it's not the norm. It's extremely out of the ordinary. He's the only one that's asked me to do this in the time that I've done this. And he, he, this place that person said point blank, I'm not, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know, but I believe this is part of what they, what he got hit for. And it's, it's tape. It's a recording. He can't say he never said it. Right. Is he seriously the GOP Congressman mulls a run for the White House? Holy fucking A. Oh, my God. They actually, they asked him. I'm to, <laughs> They asked him to see how, uh, frankly, how delusional he actually was. And he, he basically was self-deprecating. But at the same time, he said it hasn't not crossed his mind. He thought about it. Well, now, well, he's not going to. This is the same guy who, it wouldn't surprise me because this is the same guy who told somebody he only wanted one term in office because that would guarantee him health care for life. Right. Yeah. I mean, this guy is just, he's just, you know, I don't know. Anybody could possibly, possibly vote for him. There's not one thing that comes out of this guy's mouth that you can count on. Not one thing. But this is the evolution of the Republican Party. It sure is. This is how bad it's gotten. Any self-respecting I... party would have forced him to resign already. But they need his vote. And it's as simple as that. They have the slimmest of majorities. And God damn it, I'm telling you now, you better get out there in record numbers and get rid of these cretins. All right. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how much more you need. I really don't. The Republicans, as slimy as they are, some have actually recommended that he that he leave because they don't want his slime on the, on their skin. You know what I'm saying? He, he they don't want to be exposed to be the charlatans that they actually are right. by supporting this guy because he's just so out there yeah at this point that normally normally I would not use these guys as sources. But the reason I'm using them as sources is that some of the things that George Santos are, are claiming, not even Newsweek is, is going to back him up. Right. All right? So, <laughs> hold on. So basically, all right, 
and and it's it's lagging so i might even stop share again um basically what santos is saying is that all of these all of these allegations some of which he they have records of what he did they have financial records of what he did they have wire transfer you know wire transfer records of what he did they have recordings okay there is also He's, a story out there that there was an fbi agent undercover in his congressional yeah. office yeah all right so He's claiming number one, it's a witch hunt, and number two, that the Biden administration and I understand they have a House investigation, a thirty-two page report, whatever, of um, of Hunter Biden and his business dealings. Newsweek, Newsweek admits, and Newsweek is a right-wing paper at this point or, or publication newsweek admits there is no link between hunter biden and his businesses when he was a private citizen and joe biden there's nothing out there None. there's nothing, there's nothing. That connection now we have now we have james comer saying that he can't find his key witness his whistleblower has magically disappeared you know what i don't think the whistleblower ever existed I, I really don't. Okay. And by the and way, let me see. you have James yeah. Comer who admitted on tape to paying off someone to keep quiet about an affair he was having with her. You know, we have criminals investigating. We have criminals on oversight committees. You must be kidding me. Jim Jordan is accused of ignoring sexual abuse of wrestlers at Ohio State University, and he's on an oversight committee. Right. I mean, come on. We have nine students there who said he knew about it, and he refused to do anything with it. All right. Well, I'm having I'm having issues with this. I guess I guess I probably so there's probably so much adware on this. It's not going to let me do it. I don't know. Yeah, we don't. We so don't. and now, well, one thing I do did want to mention is that George Santos did admit to stealing checks in Brazil. Okay. Right. And, uh, and a deal way, to I drop. If you, have, if you have the story, but I have it. I will include it in the uh, in the uh, links. But yep. uh, he, he's working on a deal now to get himself out of trouble in Brazil. Right. Well, that's um, I have a story from NPR. I don't know which source you have. That but might be it. That might yeah. be the one I have too. I'll look. If it's different, I'll put yeah, mine into yeah. it. But... And the AP story, uh, you know, he he pled not guilty. It's a witch hunt. It's always it's a, a witch, witch hunt. hunt. They're all, Donald Trump says it's a witch hunt. He's you know, they're all they're all being victimized. All of these criminals right. are being victimized. You know, give me a break, okay? Now the final the final piece of this is the cement to the corruption wall. Which is which is Donald Trump? Donald Trump, as we know, is currently in a lot of trouble for the Story Me Daniels situation. E. Jean Carroll just sued him. Um, was a five million dollar uh, settlement, I believe. Yep, he's um, now an official sexual predator. Um, he was accused. He was found guilty of sexual battery. Um, he is now officially, uh, you know publicly a sexual predator. Um, and he went on, again, he went on the CNN town hall and defamed her all over again. She's considering another suit against him. Right, a defamation suit. Another now, defamation suit. the... I don't know how the statute of limitations was 
was figured out in this case. Uh, what I will say is that it did happen, what, 20, 30 years ago. Um, the, the, uh, the, the sexual battery, there is, yes. there is no statute 20, of limitations. In 2022, Kathy Hochul signed a bill that gave women. Oh, right, 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 right. So, right, right, right. And frankly, every state should sign the same legislation. Here, here's what, here's what caught him. Donald Trump did not, did not deny having that incident happen. I believe it was in a changing room. Um, so, and I don't know where it was, department store, wherever it was. He said it was, uh, it was hijinks. It was sexual hijinks. It was hanky panky. That's, that's the word that he used. Okay. Like locker room talk, hanky panky. What caught him was his commentary that E. Jean Carroll wasn't his type. Rape and sexual battery isn't about being attracted to a person. It's about, it's about power and getting what you want, right? But when he was asked to identify a picture of E. Jean Carroll Young, he identified her as Marla Maples, his first wife. I mean, people, there's no end to this bullshit, really. You know, that's what got him caught. What got him caught was the assertion that she's not his type. This wasn't about a date, okay? He literally grabbed her by her genitals. He fingered her. Yeah, and by okay. the way, there were 17 other women who described the same exact thing with Donald Trump. The same thing. Which is another thing that, that caught him. He was not he was not convicted of rape because that would be physical penetration with your genitals to her genitals, or his genitals to her genitals, but it was battery, sexual battery, which was the the, the fingering, right. which okay. is disgusting. And and just and by the way, his little Hollywood tape, too. That's what also got him caught was, you know, the thing that they let people like us do that. You know, you know, yeah, they do, actually. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that should be that way. Right. But there's not it's only that. Stuff. There's, there's uh, I have a. Um, a story, I believe we we've shown it before from SEMA for there's a list of all of the current investigations, the Jack Smith investigation, the Vining Willis uh, investigation. And it wasn't even including the E. Jean Carroll case. Right. Okay, it wasn't. Um, I believe the Stormy Daniels case was in there at that time. And do not... Uh, do not underestimate the power of women to come forward at this point. E. Jean Carroll should be commended for what she did. She she really should. And I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And I know <laughs> there's a couple things I don't want to hear. Um, number one, that she just did it for the money. She's a freaking, she's a journalist, all right? And she wants the truth to come out. Um, that's what she said. And she said it was disgusting that this guy was getting away with it and she wouldn't have been able to live with herself if she would have let, just let it go. She's a journalist, for God's sake. There are other women who now two, have a path, a path forward, by the way. Right. right. Number two. Well, what about Joe? What about Joe? What about Joe? Where is Tara Reid? I have articles that say Tara Reid's story is falling apart. You know, Tara Reid certainly could have come forward by now. I, I really have a, I have a huge doubt. I had a huge doubt from the beginning about that. I've never seen anything. I've never seen her actually come forward and make any statements anywhere other than to, you know, little allegations in little newspapers. You know, wh wh what is she all about? I, I, you know, 
making short, snappy quips on Twitter means nothing to me, actually. I need to, you know, E.G., that wasn't what E.G. Carroll did, okay? She didn't right. do that. And there's a, and we're going to be talking um, about next week, the great, the great comparison. Donald Trump, Joe Biden. The two parties are the same, right? Okay. Yes, Joe Biden has been accused of sexual assault. Where are those accusers now? Now what are they on? Oh, he's too old. He's too this. They didn't work, so they're on to something else. Okay. Do you notice that generally when something is true, people stay on it forever? They will, they will hound it until it comes out. You know, look, they've been investigating Joe Biden since before the 2020 election. The GOP has been investigating, okay? There is a tape out there that shows Ron Johnson saying there was nothing before the 2020 election. They've said it. Now we're in the same boat again. We're rehashing the same old shit over and over and over and over and there is nothing that they can provide. Even if, even if Hunter Biden is charged by the DOJ, and he could very well be for his business dealings, there is no link to Joe Biden. And by the way, if Hunter Biden did something wrong, he should be charged. Correct. Absolutely. And by the way, yeah, okay? by the way. He's, a, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's his own man. He's not Joe Biden's child. He is, but he's not. He's not an, uh, you know, an underage, you know, minor. He he did what he did, and right. he admitted to what he did. He admitted he's not a good guy, and the guy is a freaking addict. You don't stop loving your kids when they're addicts, okay? That's the if that Joe Biden's guilty of anything, what's he guilty of? Look at Can you behind the sun. So be it. Look at the pattern of Republicans when they face an investigation and Democrats when they face an investigation, typically. Every time I hear <laughs> I hear Joe Biden say the same things, I welcome the investigation. I will I will cooperate with whatever they need. Um, you know, and he's denied I knew nothing about my son's business. And no one has no one has been able to find that link. When you talk to George Santos, what does he do? He points to Joe. He points to this one. He points to this one. Same Wait, thing with Steve. Or what was me? Or what was me? Or it's a witch hunt. Donald or I'm Trump a victim. Is, Donald, Donald Trump is the king of all what was me. Right. He's the king right. of all what was me. He go he goes run runs to true social. Right. You know, fake news, fake news, fake news. Where he disparages everybody. You know, I, I it, it's it's incredible. It really is. The two parties are not the same, and we're going to show you that next week. Yep. Now, as I said, feel free. For some reason, I was I was glitching. I'm going to try one more time. I wanted to show this. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Okay. This is what the Republicans do constantly. This is what they do. They re release fa Biden family bank records. All right. And what did Joe say? Feel free. Feel free to, to investigate. They investigated it. Yeah, there's nothing there. They but, investigated you know, it. And this, by the same token, you know, Hunter Biden was not working for the U.S. government, right? No. We have Ivanka Trump and Jerry Kushner earning $640 million while in the White House working as upper echelon people in Trump's administration. And we also have a $2 billion payout to Jerry Kushner from a Saudi prince. That no one understands why he was given that money. And okay? by the way, not even the Saudis understand that. 
And we did speak about that in a previous show. Right. <laughs> so, and by the way, Jared Kushner was was working for the government. Right. When this happened and directed directly from from Donald Trump himself. Right. To do, do the things that he was doing. Right. It's completely different. Right. So Hunter all Biden they have was never is... in, Hunter Biden was never in Joe Biden's administration because only fascists put their immediate family members in that position because they're protected that way. That's the way right. this shit works. Right. And when when Joe was asked about it, he always says something to the effect of, I love my son. He's not protecting him. He's not, you know, giving him a pardon. He's not doing any of that. But every time, George Santos, of all people, he is he is accused of something. What does he do? He points to Hunter. Right. Instead of saying, no, this is what happened. This is what happened. This is what happened. Here are the documents. Because he has nothing. Right. And what he does have is grift. He can't help himself. This is what the GOP has devolved into. And it's not just one or two guys. It's well, not just Steve like Bannon. Lauren Gobert is out there constantly. Right. Like, that's all she spends her time doing. Carrie Lake. Right. Okay. So... Please spare me. And by the way, guys like Charlie Kirk and Nick Fuentes, who, who are trying to infiltrate the Republican Party themselves, they want to get right. rid of the, the. They want to get rid of the Mitt Romneys and the uh, right, the, the Mitch McConnells. They want all the people that they want. <laughs> if They're saying Marjorie Taylor Greene isn't enough, right? They're saying she's not far right enough. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, in order to stop this, I understand, again, Deb and I have these conversations constantly. I understand some people feel that Joe Biden is too moderate, that so-and-so is too moderate. Um, Adam Frisch was too moderate, that you know, um, Ron Goldman is too moderate. That this one is too moderate. Okay. What is the alternative? And I don't want to hear the lesser of two evils argument because it's either a guy who supports a little bit of corporate money here or there, or someone who supports complete fascism and is a corporatist anyway. Well, if you course, want. By the way, let me just yeah. talk to you about this. Ah. One party's moving in the right direction. I have said this before. Yep. The entire squad does not take any PAC money from right. corporations. Right. All of the new elected people in the House of Representatives and the Senate did not take corporate PAC money. At Fetterman did not take corporate PAC money, and neither did Warnock. The, we have one party moving in the right direction. We have another party moving to towards total frontal fascism. So... You want to bitch and moan, get yourself into a position where you vote, and then we can start working on the Democrats to move further to the left. That's the goal here. All and right? by the way, another one. But, but if I'll you, tell you right now, yeah. as we move towards 2024, we are in a very dangerous position here. All right. I don't think you people really understand the ramifications. We should, I will say this until until. I don't care it, it, who wants to hear it again. We should never have lost the House with a nine-seat lead. Never. That that House of Representatives, that was ours to own. And we only expanded the Senate by one senator. That should never have happened. That happens when Democrats don't vote. Now we're at the next election coming up. We not only have to win back the House, but we have to expand the Senate even further. Do you know what? All roads leading to change start with voting. That's the way it works here in America. Your vote is your voice. Okay? We're not going to storm the fucking Capitol for you. 
Okay, that's not the way this works. Right. You want to start making change, then you start voting. The only way this country changes is to vote out the GOP in large numbers. That's the end of the, this is the way it is. And and to keep them out, the fascists can't be allowed a voice in our government. I, you know, I don't know what else you want me to say. And by the way, it's not through doxing. It's not through swatting. We had, we had that conversation in one of the other shows. We're not going to stoop to that. We have to choose to get these people out. What I wanted to say before, too, is that if someone is concerned enough about John Fetterman, fine, primary him. But to he's he, the man is doing his job. He's doing his job. He's struggling. And he's, he's being like honest no way, about it. There is no way. Look at folks. You know what? John Fetterman should be lauded for what he did not condemned for what he did. We have plenty of people we can condemn. That's not one of them. Get a grip on yourselves. All right? Get a grip. You're all, and, all out there saying we need to take care of the mental health system. We need to take care of the mental health system. Well, you know what? Put your money where your mouth is. All right? I'm it's tired obvious. Of yeah. him, all right? He, he is, he is num number one, motoring through it and number two obviously he's empathetic to the cause so let the man do his job he's doing his job and stop being prejudicial against the man because he has a speech impediment cut yes, it out right give me a break yeah freaking stroke i have had family members to have a stroke and have speech aphasia okay they still they are still functioning it is a very difficult situation. And to have someone who is able to get through, work through that, and be empathetic with you, that's invaluable to the people of Pennsylvania and to the people of the country. One thing I another thing I want to say, if we can't get rid of Ted Cruz now when he's vulnerable, we have a real I don't know we have what a the hell. We have a shot. We have a shot. Ted Cruz in the Senate, if we don't get rid of Lauren Bobert when she's vulnerable, George Santos, and hold on to some of these some of these seats and and take control back in uh, in New York, we have a real shot here to to right what we did wrong in the last election. Look at Michigan is going gangbusters under Gretchen Whitmer. They they took that state back after 40 years. If Michigan can do it, if Minnesota can do it, right. Massachusetts can do it, and Maryland can do it, we need to do it, okay? I mean, this is not a joke, folks. And I'm hearing, I'm hearing criticisms of Nikki Freed. What are you doing? What are you doing? If you're in Florida, what are you doing? How are you helping her? You people are barely even making a squeak down there. What the fuck? The problem. The, the, the latest from Santos is he has yeah. signed legislation that permits doctors to stop treating people based on their conscience. That goes against the fucking Hippocratic oath, folks. Right. How much are you going to tolerate down there? You mean DeSantis? Yeah, DeSantis. I'm sorry, DeSantis. You, you said San Santos. <laughs> uh, you know, I got Santos on the brain. But I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, that that's that's unbelievable. And and don't don't kid yourselves. <laughs> That's aimed specifically at transgender and, transgender. and LGBT people without oh, absolutely. saying that in the bill. But by the way, that doesn't mean it can't happen to you based on other things. All right. Right. We're talking about conscience, that's a pretty broad term. Right. Birth control. What happens? Birth control? You know, let's I mean, say you're an African American, you come in with a gunshot wound. Oh, you're probably a gang member. Let them die on the street. You know. You're just saying. And one more thing. You want to help Nikki Freed? One of the problems with that is that the uh, the Florida uh, Democratic uh, Committee down there they they made a grave tactical error, and they they. Uh, wasted Val Demings' candidacy, and they wasted um, 
Charlie Crist's candidacy. They did not support them at all, thinking that their name or their, you know, their strength would get them through with no funding whatsoever, with no advertising money whatsoever. That's not how this works. Charlie Crist had as much money for the entire state of Florida as DeSantis spent just in Miami alone. That's it. So get a clue. Nikki Freed is inheriting a mess. And that that takes time to write. But without people supporting, you know, what are you what are you all doing down there? Going to Disney World? Wake up. Your state is a fascist hellhole. And people still vacationing in there. And I'm calling out all the college students for spring break. Find somewhere else to party. Okay. They rely on your money and your tourism. Find somewhere else to take your goddamn family during school break. Do you remember Mike Pence when he was talking about um, banning gay marriage, banning um, cosplay, banning all these things, um, doing a bunch of anti-gay stuff in in Indiana? Uh, the stuff with, um, what's the name? Uh I can't remember her name. The the uh, one who refused to uh, to marry people. She was a court clerk or whatever. Uh, I, I remember, can't yeah, remember. I know, I remember yeah, yeah, the court clerk. I. It's like he was hardcore, and you had businesses. You had the NCAA. You had Gen Con, who, the uh, director who happens to be gay. Okay, they put financial pressure on him. You're starting to see it in Florida, starting to, you know, with Anheuser-Busch or Disney or whatever. Buy those products if, you know, if you, if you support them. Push against it, okay? Do just civil disobedience actions against this nonsense, just violate his rules that shouldn't be rules in the first place. Continue to do it. I they, know it's, it's not they, easy, but... They did show up at um, uh, whatever the King's Palace was there uh, when they were debating the latest anti-trans bill. And uh, no. I want you to know that uh, the cops took care of that. You know, They squashed that one. But it's the first time I'd seen anything out of Florida. Um, you know, you need to participate, folks. Okay. You're going to have Democratic candidates come 2024 and you need to vote for them. All right. No more sitting at home. People who are sitting at home or riding the fence. This is, this is game time now. All right. You know, this is the last great shot before we start rubber stamping fascist elections for the next 25 years here in America. You know, if it's not in your backyard, if you get a case of the NIMBYs, I, I'm going right. to tell you right now, you 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 certainly have friends who it may be in their backyard. You certainly may have children and grandchildren, and it's in their backyard. And you know what? You need to stop being the rugged individual who thinks only of yourself and start moving in the right direction here. You know, there's this thing called the greater good. There's 337 million of us here. We should be able to take these mothers down, okay? We need to purge this government of the GOP. It's as simple as that. I can't, I can't, I can't stress that any further. And anyone who uses this constantly on a, on a consistent basis and anybody that I see on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, Instagram, whatever, constantly complaining about George Santos, you hit, you have my information. You can, you can contact me. You can contact the Working Families Party. I know that they're going to be active in Nassau County during that during that primary. I know they're going to to work hard to uh, to get this guy out. I know they are. We have to at this point. Number one, I, number one, those people in that district, they are not being represented. 
just like Madison oh, Cawthorn wasn't representing his people. They showed up in, in Washington to tell him to quit his right. constituents. Right. So, I mean, and all he's doing, he's doing like photo ops and, and, you know, all that stuff. And he's talking about trying to get on documentaries, trying to get paid. He did he's grifting. He co one bill. He co-sponsored a bill to make the AR-15 the national gun. That's his great contribution to his district. Wake up, okay? Wake up. I'm going to say. I did um, remember that story about the the kid with the T-shirt. I was looking for a news uh, for a news source, the best valid news source. I came up with the hill, but one of the <laughs> one one of the news sources. I swear to God, was AR15.com. Great. God have mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And meanwhile, back in Texas, I want you to know that they've finally made strides <laughs> and finally passed the gun bill after the last mass shooting. You want to know what that gun bill was? Uh, age for purchasing an assault right. weapon. From 18 to 21. What the fuck, people? I mean, what is that? That is a big nothing. The shooter, the last shooter was 33 years old. Get a clue. And by, and by the way, the next guy who who goes into a gun store and is denied because he's 19, he's going to go to the NRA. They're going to fight it. They're going to bring it to the Supreme Court. And they're going to, they're going to, you know, fix them or whatever. So. Uh... By the way, that's another topic. I keep hearing all over the place. We need to fix the Supreme Court. We need to fix the Supreme Court. That isn't going to happen. Okay, that's not going to happen. Just like you're not going to have any action on Clarence Thomas as long as you have the GOP in power in the House. The only way, the all roads to fixing all of these messes starts with voting. So when people tell you, and I have people come into my groups all the time on Facebook saying, join our group about reclaiming America's courts. You want to reclaim America's courts? You're going to have to vote first. Voting is the start of all of this. All of it. It was created just, so yeah. you would participate in government. You need to do this. You want to change the Supreme Court? It's not going to be fixed. The term limits aren't going to happen. It's not going to be expanded. And there aren't going to be any ethics until you vote. You're going to have to vote the people out of the legislature to get that done. The last person to leave... Under a situation like this, I believe his name was Abe Fortas. It was in, yes. what, 1969. This is not 1969. Okay, and it was a completely different situation. And he had he did nothing like what Clarence Thomas has done. Not a No, thing. And, and not for nothing, he was only in for a very short time. And he actually had a conscience enough to, uh, to leave voluntarily. Clarence Thomas is not going to leave the Supreme Court voluntarily. He's either going to be convicted of a crime, and don't count on that, or he's going to pass away whenever he passes away, or he's going to retire before he passes away. And that's some By the time. Way, there's stories out there that Robert's wife has been influencing him because she's a staunch anti-abortionist. You know, there's all kinds of stuff, folks. All right. Amy Coney Barrett. Amy right. Coney Barrett. Right. Yeah, I, uh, not and, this yep. shit without voting. That's all I'm going to say. All you're going to be doing is pissing and moaning on Facebook, and that changes nothing. You need you need a majority. You need a major majority. And I know, honestly, you need like to to really get this done. Seventy thirty in the Senate. That's what you need to to at least sixty. At least at 60. least sixty. At least at the very minimum sixty. But that's that's cutting it close because then what happens if you, you have a Joe Manchin type? You can override right. the filibuster with sixty. You know, think about this, folks, because any time that you have had a problem with getting legislation passed, when it has been one owning the House and one owning the Senate and one owning the House and one owning the Senate, any time that that has happened, the the right wing, the GOP uses the filibuster like it's fucking, you know, candy. It, it really like they're sitting around eating candy all day. They use the filibuster to stop. It's it's an undemocratic process. You want to override the filibuster? You want to get rid of the filibuster? 
you're going to need majority okay. or get or elect uh democratic uh senators who have the chutzpah have the balls to override the filibuster like the republicans do that's right say fine they do it we're gonna do it every yeah. single time and let them let them bitch and let them moan we need this in we need build back better we need you know better health care we need this we need that screw them they're not in when they're in then you know we'll deal with that but right now we're in let's get this done yep okay okay gang so we'll see you next week yep lecture's over have a nice night happy mother's day all you mothers uh